two different questions with simultaneous equations in them. And I've crafted each of them, uh, one and two, to use the one, two methods that you know for algebraically dealing with these things without drawing them, if you recall. Okay. So, I'm not going to get you guys to come up because it does actually take a bit of time. Does anyone have an idea, at least, even if they don't have the right answer, of how to approach number one? No? Any, say, like, anyone? Yeah. You have to get at least one of the equations to have x equals 2 or y equals 2. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so we remember the challenging thing about having simultaneous equations. You've got a pair of them. But uh, with great responsibility comes... No, that's not right. Um, with two equations, you have to solve for two variables, and that's what makes this more challenging. So we're trying to take this problem, which is hard, and turn it into an easier problem. Yesterday, or last week, uh, for review questions, I gave you equations where there's just one variable, one equation. And you guys can eat that for breakfast, even when there's like weird fractions and x's on both sides. So how do we turn one of these into one of those? You remember I mentioned you've got to really name these equations. You can't interact with them together unless you know which one is which. Once you've called one one and the other one two, I can operate on them. I can do any operations that I want. I want to choose ones that will do what we did, wanted, which is get rid of a y or get rid of an x. So what's something I could do to equation one and equation two that would remove, that would take away one of the variables? There's a word I'm trying to avoid that starts with E, but I don't want to say it because it will kind of spoil it. I'm trying to eliminate one of the variables, so I'm left with just one of them. Looking at the particular numbers that are there, I think we can eliminate the y's if we, what are we going to do to both equations? Can you see? There's a plus 3y here, there's a minus 3y here. So if you just put them together, the plus 3y and the minus 3y will cancel. They will eliminate each other. That will happen if I add these two together. Okay, so this will be the first line of working that I have for question one. I'm going to say, 1 plus 2. Okay. Is this ringing a bit of a bell when you see that? Okay, so you take everything on the left and you add it. You take everything on the right and you add it. Uh, 2x plus 5x. Cool. The whole reason we chose to add them is because these guys are just going to collapse. They're gone. You don't have to deal with them at all. Right hand side, 5 plus 4. And that's about as straightforward as you can get. Right? I know what to do with this. I just want x by itself, so I will Sorry. divide by 7. Which gives you a value for x. But there was another pronumeral to find, right? So what am I going to do now? <coughs> yeah, so, so that's what x is. So I want to put that um, into one of these. Now, do you have a preference for which one you choose? First one. one. I would also probably choose the first one for at least two reasons. Number one. Um, it's, it's positive, yeah. So I, I will avoid negative signs wherever I can, just like I avoid fractions. Secondly, I just it's a 2 instead of a 5. Like, I just want to do smaller numbers rather than bigger ones, because they're easier for my head. Okay. So I'm going to... What's the name when you put it back into something? I'm going to substitute. So I'm going to substitute x into, as you suggested, equation 1. So I'm just going to write it letter for letter, except instead of x, I'll write my new number. Okay. Um, and the rest of this is just a little bit of crunching. Again, we transform a problem which we were sort of, it's icky to deal with, into a problem that we know we're quite familiar with. Uh, 2 times 9 over 7 is 18 over 7. While I'm at it, I might as well write this 5 as something over 7. What's 5 as something over 7? Do you divide by 7 to get 5? I think it's 35, right? 35 over 7. You can just mentally check. 35 divided by 7 is 5. Why did I do that? Why did I decide to make it messier? Because it's Because so I see, I already have this fraction over here, right? So I kind of want these two to talk to each other. There are 35 of them over here. I'm going to take away 18, which leaves me with... I think it's 17. 17? Yeah? Is that okay? Are you asking about this? You're asking about that, why I did that? Yeah, sure. Um, and it is a bit counterintuitive because 5 looks <coughs> nice and neat. Why would I bother making it messy like that? And the reason I make it messy is for the same reason if I wanted you to evaluate that, you would make that messier. 
a half plus a third. That's as simple as those fractions get. But to actually add them together, I think this is more useful to me, right? The fractions are messier, but at least they can talk to each other, which is exactly the scenario we have here. Okay. Um, last line, what do I do? I'm just going to divide both sides by 3, 17 on 21. Fantastic. Now, I will admit, if you got that answer and you looked at it and you're like, those are weird looking numbers, did I get it right or not? Uh, the main reason they're weird numbers is because I just made these up on the fly. Usually we would take a bit more time to craft that so you end up with neat numbers. But there's nothing wrong with it. If you really wanted to double check, <coughs> you would take this guy and this guy and you can substitute them back into your original equations. Both of them and they'll work. Now just because of the, the length of the time that went through, I'm not going to finish solving number two, but I'm going to give you just the beginning of it. Okay. This was by elimination. You can do this by elimination if you want, but there's another way you can do it. There's another technique you have at your disposal. What's it called? Solving by substitution. Okay. So here's the way I would begin. We won't finish it, but it'll, um, it'll give you a start if you're like, I didn't know where to begin. Uh, this is equation one. Yeah. This is equation two. Can you see the reason why I think, uh, don't worry about elimination, is because unlike in question one, See how these numbers really nicely match up to each other? It's like someone deliberately did it so they would match up. In question two, there's nothing like that. Okay, all of the numbers are all mismatched. Okay, so therefore, I'm going to look at equation one and I'm going to rearrange it. And I even write that I'm doing this. You see, uh, just like the opening sentence in a paragraph in an essay, you kind of want to say what you're doing so they know what on earth you're talking about. So I'm going to say, all right, this algebra that I'm going to begin, this is what I'm going to do with it. This equation here, I'm going to make A the subject. It's not hard to make A the subject. What will I do to both sides? So I already have a minus 2B, so I will add 2B and that'll get it over to the other side for me. So I'm going to get A equals 2B plus 7. Are you okay with that? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to take this guy, and as the name suggests, I'm going to substitute into my other equation. Do you rename that? Um, you can rename this if you do. Do you remember I said, three don't just name three. it randomly. You could name it equation 3, but one I'm actually going to call it 1a, so that I don't mistake. Like, equation 3 doesn't tell you where it came from, but 1a says, well, you came from 1. Do you remember what happens if you accidentally take an equation, and substitute it back into where it came from. Does anyone remember what happens? Let me, um, don't write this down because it's confusing, but let me show you, right? If I take this, it came from one, let me just put it back into one, see what happens. Instead of A, I'm gonna write this. So there's the A. Take away 2B equals seven. And you're like, oh cool, I'm really good at collecting like terms. And you're like, um, okay. <laughs> That's nice. great. I mean, it's not wrong. Yeah, it's not wrong, but it hasn't gotten you anywhere. So that's why if you say where it came from, that's kind of useful information. Don't put it back into where it came from. Even though 7 is 7, which is a relief. Put it into the other equation. So this is the way I'm going to write 7. Like that. This is where the uh, method gets its name from. So I'm going to have six lots of that. They're equal to 1, and then I'm just going to go ahead and solve. I don't think we need to finish that now. It's the same kind of skill that you were working on here. But you can have a go. If you want to check whether you got the right answer or not, just call me over later. Okay? <laughs>